Hi there, it's Emma again. Yes, I'm releasing these on different days, but you may note I've had the same outfit on in every video because that is because I'm filming them all at once. So we are back to more unused decks. Why well, I'll get the I'll get the hashtag right in the title, but Candy Soul and Soil started the unused deck wise hashtag or something like that and this is part two of mine these are decks that are staying in my collection but that i found that i don't read with very often um and let me tell you that um not counting the decks that i had put aside that are in my other video my current collection is at 66 tarot and 31 oracle that's a total of 97 but i think Four of those are Kickstarters that um, haven't arrived and, you know, won't be in the collection for a while. So that's where we're at. Um, and I think I have about 15 that I'm finding that I haven't used very frequently. And I'm going to look into why that is. So the first category I have is, I guess, production or size or, you know, physical reasons why I'm not using the, the deck very much. And I think this first one maybe is a combination of the size and a few things about um, the way the deck works. So this is the R Tarot. I will say this comes with a fabulous guidebook. It's big and chunky. It's like three or four pages on each card with a biography of each of the characters. I just find that as a tarot, um, the images are very small. These cards are quite small with a big white borders and... There's not that much to go on if I don't know who the person is. So I'm essentially just reading with the title of the card. Uh, so what I use this for is sometimes I'll just pick a card and go read the book and learn about someone whose story I don't really know that much about. And so it's just a kind of fun way. Which, what's Women's History Month? Whichever month that is, sometimes I pull it out then and I just I look through a couple of cards a day. So no plans to get rid of it. I think I picked it up. Um, it was like a remainder copy that I picked up very cheaply. I think it was about $11. So, um, yeah, I love the book, so I'm just going to hang on to it. Um, oh, this pains me. So these next two, they're related. They're the Cosmovisions and Prismavisions Tarot in a Tin version. Um, and my only complaint with these, they're gorgeous is that I'm just oh, there, here's my hand the cards are so tiny and that just doesn't work for me in the context of the size of the artwork it's just too hard to see and I do have the digital guidebook um but I find with that the print is small and you can't do the usual like pinch the screen and enlarge it so this is a standard US games card do the back and this is the size of these cards. And again, I think if the art were different, I would be delighted by the size of these because they're just like adorable as heck. The tins are great. The production quality is all really good. Um, I just, you know, these old eyes are not picking up the artwork too easily. Um, and that's it. But I have no plans to get rid of them at this point. Uh, this next one is in a little pouch. And I think similar, was it Candy that mentioned this? Some of the reasons decks don't get used as much is because of the way they're stored. And I will say anything I have in a bag is in a drawer. And I have to remind myself that I have them because I don't have this instant association with the fabric or to even remember to go open the drawer. So this is the um, Chris Walter uh, Goddess Tarot. I did a a borderectomy on this because the colors seemed so washed out so I like this deck in the scheme of what I'm using now you know it's okay um, I don't reach for it as much as I might because it was one of the first decks I trimmed and as you can see I did quite a rough and tumble job of it and so it doesn't shuffle anymore and I do love the shuffle of a US games deck and I ruined that what I have done, I don't know if you can see, I edged the miners in blue, and I think this deck, not the miners, the majors, 
Um, so I think this deck really shines for me as a majors only deck. The minors are kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. But I think the majors are really interesting because they've, um, you know, assigned a different goddess to each major and it's just something different. And yeah, so I use that as a majors only from time to time. So it's not going anywhere. I think this was maybe the second tarot I bought and I have an emotional bond to it because I bought it because someone else that I really admire had it. And so you know how that goes. A little bit of FOMO, a little bit of I like you, so I'm going to be like you kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this next one is the U.S. Games Pride Tarot. Despite the fact that the box is falling apart, I really don't read with that. I love the backs, the love is love backs. Um, you know, it's a collab deck. The cards are okay. You know, some of them, some of them I don't get. Um, I don't even know why I don't read with this one that much. I think, I don't know. It's just there. It's one of those that I just forget about. I just forget about it. I should just use it more maybe. Um, okay. So there's that. I guess we'll go to another collab deck while we're at it. Um, so the next deck I have on my list, I have only one of the 78 tarot decks. This is the ecological tarot. Um, I think there are a couple of reasons I don't use this very much. The cards are, the cards are pretty big. You know, these are some big cards. Um, and I just want to talk about collaborative decks for a minute. Because I know sometimes people say, I don't like collaborative decks. I kind of do, and I kind of a lot of times treat my whole deck collection as a collaborative deck. Um, sometimes if I'm going to do a Celtic Cross, I'll, I'll randomly pick out 10 decks and use one deck for each position. I like working with my Alley Man. I made a video about that, about embracing the chaos. Um, I think what I'm finding with this one, though, and here's, here's an example of why I find reading with this deck a little bit skewed. So we have this card here, um, which is just one of the most beautifully rendered um, pieces of art I've seen in a tarot deck. And then we have this. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with this whatsoever. However, this is a fine art rendering, and this is just not. And if I'm pulling a couple of cards and these two come together I'm always going to have kind of a cartoonish association with this card and a more serious association with this card so you know what I mean the, this art style is kind of locking in the reading in a way that I don't necessarily want it to here's another pairing with you know something that's more of a fine art rendition and something that's a little more basic if the whole deck were this style from different artists it wouldn't I it's just the imbalance, the potential imbalance that you're going to get in a reading. Um, so that's why I don't use this one this, that frequently. Um, so I don't know. I should probably play with it more and give it a better chance. But I think, you know, the size of the cards and the kind of off-kilter um, pairings um, is one of the reasons I just don't tend to reach for it. Um then I've got one. I don't really know why I don't reach for it. This is the Tarot of the Divine. I was completely drawn to the art of this deck. But for some reason, then when I try to read with it, you know, it's not quite working for me. I will, in all fairness, say I haven't put much time into it. Um, you know, I've heard some people say, if you familiarize yourself with the stories... That tends to help. Um, so this is on this cusp for me of it's a mass market deck. Um, I like the art, but I'm not really using it. So do I hold on to it as an art deck or what do I do with it? But for now, I have no real incentive to get rid of it. Um, so I'm just going to hang on to it. Okay, then I've got a couple over here that have a theme. So this is the Mystical Cats Tarot. I think this was from Llewellyn. Um, I do have the book, but I got rid of the box. This was a gift from a friend who had two copies. 
Um, so it has a nice sentimental value for me. This is really like Rider weight, but cats acting like cats, which I kind of dig that, that, you know, their personalities are really coming out. So I think this is a really good deck. I just tend not to reach for a cat deck. It just is what it is. And I have cats and I love cats. Um, somehow that just doesn't seem to happen. I don't know. And then the other one is also a cat deck. And it is the Grimalkin Tarot. Um, and similar. Like, it's just, I like the images. It's kind of fun. I find that this deck is so slippery, though. Like, if I pick this up and start to overhand shuffle it, the cards are all over the room. I don't know. There's something about this this finish and this card stock. And the cards are just a little too big to riffle shuffle, so I have to overhand them. And then they, <laughs> they have a mind of their own, just like cats. They're all over the place. So that's pretty fun. Yep, so there's that one. Okay, then I have another one that just seems to be a function of, um, you know, the, the well in packaging sometimes is the giant box and the oversized book and then like the little tiny pack of cards with a lot of cardboard around it. So this is one where I threw the box away because it annoyed me and I have the book on the bookshelf, but then I forget that I have the deck. And I actually like this deck. It's the Hedge Witch Botanical Oracle. And it's perfectly lovely. And it's merely a function of me forgetting that it's in the drawer. That I don't use it. So I will find a way to remedy that. I think with all the white, it's more of like a springy, maybe around February, around Imolk. I'll bring that one out because it has that kind of light energy to it. Um, so I like it. I just tend not to use it. Then I've got six more. Um, that tend to be, well, we'll see, we'll go, but these are more like, I don't really know how to read with it. Is it its own system? Like what's happening here? <clears throat> and the first one in this little bag with a goat on it is the Emily Dickinson tarot, which, and I'm terrible. I forgot the name of the press and I took the title card out, um, but the reason I don't read with this, um, it's kind of cool. All the major arcana are insects. Oh, here it is. It was from, it's a collaborative deck. So each of the suits was done by a different artist. And it's put out by Factory Hollow Press in Massachusetts. Um, I have trouble telling the cards apart, to be quite honestly. Um, I know the ones with this border are the pentacles. There's my cat. Hi, buddy. Um, so I think this is just more of a collectible for me. Um, and I wanted to support the, the small poetry press that put it out. And yeah, I don't read with it. It's okay, but it's not going anywhere. Hey, buddy. Guest appearance. This is Ashti. He's come to say hello. Cool. Okay, the next one. This is another deck that I picked up pretty early in my collecting without really a plan or understanding of what I was doing. It was a, oh, that looks cool in a video. And this is the Mystical Dreams, Mystical Dreamer, Mystical Dreams Tarot. I really like the art style. <clears throat> it's very kind of graphically strong, um, kind of mysterious, but I don't know what's going on in these cards. <laughs> I really don't. And I think the deal is the, the person who created the deck, um, based them on their dreams and then, uh, you know, worked with an illustrator to kind of illustrate them like this, an onion. So this is one that's in that zone where I think the symbolism was possibly personal to the creator. Um, I have not put the time in with the guidebook and I'm not sure if I will, but at the same time, I kind of like the cards. 
but I also have trouble um, reading them intuitively. They may kind of overlap into thought a little bit. I really don't know what's going on with this deck, and I haven't put the time in, but I like the cards, so I'm going to hang on to it. Okay, we got three more. This one, I think the issue is it's not a tarot deck. It's a magazine. <laughs> It's a writing anthology that they published instead of binding it. They published it as a tarot deck. So I should just move it to my bookshelf. This should have been in my cabinet of curiosities deck um, video, but I just forgot I had it, I think. So this is what the cards look like, right? So for each card, there's basically, you know, there's a few that have a cartoon, um, but they mostly have a, sh a very short story or a poem um so i don't know i could read with this deck um or i could pull a card and read the story and have that be my draw for the day but honestly i think i'm just not going to use it as a tarot deck ever and it's more of a um, literary deck which i have a whole separate collection that i just use for like literary and writing purposes so i think i'll hone that with those and then I have two decks that are just a, a hybrid of you're so pretty, I just want to look at you. And I haven't really figured out how to read with you yet. Um, and so this one is the uh, Yokai Yuji Tarot um, that I backed the Kickstarter. And it's all Japanese um, Yokai. And I love the art the guidebook just has like the shortest little descriptions of what these creatures are and then you kind of have to associate how that fits into the card meaning i think um i adore it the production quality is just and i'm not a big fan of the gilding but like the the smooth matte cards and like the card backs and you know the little the little white book so cute see what i mean they're just very short descriptions of the creatures the box is gorgeous like everything about it is beautiful i just really have not read with it i don't think i can pick up because the lighting is so bad but there's like little shadows of ghosties yeah there's one a little ghost creature but it's gorgeous you're so pretty I just want to look at you. Maybe someday I'll read with you, but you're not going anywhere if I don't because I love you. Um, and then the last one, also a You're So Pretty, I Just Want to Look at You, um, but also an aspirational, oh, this summer I'm going to learn Marseille, but now it's October and I haven't started yet, is <laughs> The Tarot of the Drowning World which was also a Kickstarter. I mean, it's just stunning and opulent and, you know, kind of decayed at the same time. Um, yeah, so this is kind of an aspirational um, getting around to learning Marseille and more of Pippish readings, but also a you're so pretty i'm not gonna get rid of you you're just gonna stay here wrapped in this wrapped in this scarf and we'll talk later yeah so those are the ones that i really touch the least um there is another small handful of oracles that i don't read with because they're more um either altar cards or for literary purposes but i don't include those here because they're not really meant for reading but that's what i've got yeah so i'm enjoying this tag and i'm gonna go watch some more responses bye